In the last few lectures, we have seen what is convolution, how to perform convolution, and some important properties of convolution. Now in this presentation, I will explain one shortcut method to perform the convolution operation. If you remember, I told you convolution of two rectangular pulses of unequal duration or unequal width will be a trapezoid and convolution of two rectangular pulses of equal duration or equal width will be a triangle. Now in this presentation, we will try to find out the trapezoid and triangle, the exact waveform which you will get after performing the convolution operation. But in this shortcut method, there is no convolution operation involved. We will obtain the result of convolution without performing any convolution. That's why I'm calling it a shortcut method and it is only applicable when you are performing the convolution of two rectangular pulses. If the pulses are not rectangular, you cannot use the shortcut method. So let's see how we can obtain the result of convolution without performing the convolution. There are two cases. In the first case, I will take two rectangular pulses having the unequal width or duration and in the second case I will take the two rectangular pulses having the same width. You only have to understand the first case and if you understand the first case you will easily get the result in the second case. In the first case let's say the first signal is having the waveform like this. It is a rectangular pulse it is non-zero between 0 to T1 otherwise it is equal to 0 and its amplitude is let's say equal to A1 and we will call this signal X1 T we will take our second signal we will call it X2 T and this signal is having the duration or width more than the first signal it is non-zero between 0 to T2 and you can clearly see T2 is greater than T1 and again we have a rectangular pulse like this and the independent variable is time T. The amplitude or the height of signal X to T is equal to AT. So we have everything to perform the shortcut method and obtain the trapezoid. We will get a trapezoid here after performing the convolution between the two signals because the width of the two rectangular pulses are unequal. T1 is not same as T2 and you can observe T2 is greater than T1. This information is very important. Actually we are talking about the duration here. The duration is equal to T1. T1 minus 0 is equal to T1 and here the duration is equal to T2 because T2 minus 0, T2 minus 0 is equal to T2. So the duration is very important and we can see the duration of the second signal X2T is greater than the duration of the first signal which is T1. And now we will obtain the waveform of the signal after performing the convolution between X1T and X2T. And as I have already told you, we will not perform the convolution operation but we will use one shortcut method. Let's say the resultant signal is yt and if you remember the property number 10 which was the property of extension or duration we can easily find out the extension of the resultant signal after performing the convolution. Here you can see the extension of signal x1t is from 0 to t1. This is the duration in which signal x1t is non-zero and in case of signal x2t the extension is from 0 to t2. So the resultant signal will have extension from 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, to T1 plus T2. Let's say T1 plus T2 is somewhere here, T1 plus T2. This is the extension of signal Yt. Now draw the trapezoid. We already know the resultant signal is a trapezoid. So draw the trapezoid. But the output waveform is incomplete. This waveform here is incomplete because there are infinite possibilities of having this trapezoid. We are only sure about the extension from 0 to T1 plus T2 but we are not sure about the other parameters. 
So it is important to obtain the other parameters like the amplitude or the height of the trapezoid. We need this parameter. We also need this time instant at which the signal becomes constant. We also need this time instant. So these three parameters are important to complete our output waveform. So let's quickly try to find out these three parameters. I will give you the shortcut to find out the parameters. If you want to calculate this height, then simply multiply A1, A2 and T1. Why T1? Because T1 is smaller. T1 duration is smaller. So we will multiply A1, A2 and T1. And in this way, we will have this height here. It is equal to A1, A2, T1. Now we are interested in calculating this time instant at which the signal value becomes constant. And to find it, we are required to first locate the starting point. The starting point is equal to origin in this case. The starting point is origin in this case. You can have different starting point than the origin. You are getting the starting point as origin according to the property of extension or duration. For example, if you have signal x1t like this, this is minus 1, then when you add minus 1 and 0, you will get minus 1. So the starting point will be equal to minus 1 in that case. So don't mug up that the starting point is always equal to 0. It depends on the extension of the resultant signal. Now we have marked our starting point and we are interested in calculating this time instant. So this time instant is equal to T1 because T1 is smaller. So measure T1 from starting point and it will be this particular instant of time. So we will measure T1 from the starting point and it will give us this time instant. So we have this parameter also and now we are required to find out this parameter. And it is very easy to find out this parameter once you know how to find out this instant. It is equal to T2. The larger duration we have to measure from the starting point and it will give us this instant of time. So now we have everything to define our trapezoid and it is one unique trapezoid which we have obtained after performing the convolution of signal x1t and signal x2t. Now in case when both the signals are having the same width, we will have a triangle and it is very easy to understand why we will have a triangle. In that particular case, T1 will be same as T2. This T1 will be same as T2. So this instant of time and this instant of time will become same. So you can see the region in which the signal y is constant will be a point and in that case we will have a triangle. So let's try to cover the second case also. In this case, we will take two rectangular pulses like this and both the rectangular pulses will have the same width or duration. This is 0, this is T. Let's say the amplitude or height is equal to A1 and this is our signal X1T. The independent variable is time T. Now we will plot the signal X2T. It is having the height more than the first signal but the width or duration is same as the first signal 0 t and let's say the height is equal to a2 and now we are interested in convoluting the two signals we will use our shortcut method and we already know we are going to get a triangle let's say the resultant signal is yt so we will first plot our triangle but to plot the triangle it is important to get the extension. So we will use the property number 10. 0 plus 0 will be 0. t plus t is equal to 2t. So this is the extension and we already know the amplitude of the waveform will be equal to a1 multiplied to a2 multiplied to t. Here we are multiplying to t because both the signals are having the same duration. So let's say somewhere here we have a1 multiplied to a2 multiplied to t and this will be available when 
time t is equal to t because this is the starting point this is the starting point and from starting point we need to measure t now we can join all the three points and this will give us a triangle so this is a unique triangle which you will get after performing the convolution of these two signals and we have obtained it following the same process as in case number one in case number one we have t1 and t2 but here we have only t so if you draw the smaller and the larger duration of time from the starting point it will be same so the duration in which the signal value is constant is equal to point here so this is all for this shortcut method we will solve some questions based on it in the coming presentations so if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one